So you just got a new gaming laptop and it's either running hot or running slow, drop in frames, or you got a new work laptop that is rendering videos slowly or doing any high CPU, GPU workload really slow than it's supposed to. If you have tried everything, including cleaning your system or undervolting your fan, it still doesn't work. That begs the question, is the thermal paste used by the manufacturer not of the best possible quality? And in most cases, spoiler alert, it is the case. So in this video, I'll try to answer the question that should you replace the stock thermal paste on your brand new laptop or when should you bother with it? So let's get started. Today, I got an ASUS TUF FX506HM laptop, which I also reviewed, which you can check it out up there. It is full stock thermal pads. All I did was just upgrade the memory to 32 gigabytes. It has been around 90 days since I bought this laptop and it has been turned on and in use most of the time even when i'm sleeping i have it on as a plex server so it is always in use on board the asus tough fx 506 we have an intel core i5 11400h 32 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz of memory and an rtx 3060 which is capable of dynamic boost up to 95 watts so a lot of juice between the cpu and gpu total of roughly about 200 watts for testing, I'll be using a recorded replay of Fortnite. That way we have a standardized test that we can run, which is also real world and not some random benchmark. So right now you can see in Fortnite, we're reaching in low 90s or mid 90s just by playing the game, not doing anything crazy at medium settings with DLSS on performance mode. Now I'm going to turn off my system. Time to replace the thermal paste with the Noctua NTH2, which is a really cool thermal paste. It ranks kind of in the top three or top two thermal paste available out there, apart from the liquid metal stuff from Thermal Grizzly. In my opinion, it's the best value thermal paste, which gives you a lot of drop in temperature when compared to standard or premium pastes. If you wish to watch a full video comparing the Noctua and Arctic Silver, you can click up there if you want to check out that nerdy video, but we'll continue with this. Now, we're just going to open up the laptop, remove the heatsink, clean it out with alcohol wipes. I'm using 99% alcohol wipes, so that's isopropyl alcohol. Just clean up the heat sinks as well as the CPU and GPU mounting surfaces. Be careful not to mess with the thermal pads or the thermal goop that is on the memory and the MOSFETs because you cannot apply thermal paste directly to those areas because it will eventually cause damage. Once you've done that, let it dry for a little bit so it's completely evaporated and super clean. Now take your thermal compound of choice, I'm using Noctua NTH2 and get a healthy amount but remember less is more. Don't go too less or too much, just medium is okay and apply it to both CPU and GPU. Drop the heatsink back on, screw on all the screws, close the laptop, plug everything in, and boom, let's compare the results. Instantly, we can see that Fortnite, with the exact same replay and everything in sync, you can see on the left that we have the before applying the Noctua and after on the right side. Not only do we see a steep temperature drop of about 10%, which is a lot when it comes to temperature drops. So we went from averaging about 93 to 95 degrees Celsius and thermal throttling to 84 to 85 degrees Celsius and the CPU frequency is just flat out 4.08 or 4.1 gigahertz all the time and CPU even under maximum amount of power put into it was reaching 88 or 89 degrees that is an improvement over the 96 or 97 degrees of highs it was doing before and that was causing FPS drops and performance issues. You can also see there is a little difference in the FPS as well. That's due to the CPU frequency fluctuation before the thermal paste was applied. And after the fact, now it's so stable, you get a good amount of FPS. So at this point, you're telling yourself, let's get the latest and greatest thermal compound, put it in, right? Wait a moment. If you haven't opened your laptop for doing this kind of thing yourself, I highly recommend not doing it. It is very easy to break something in there if you don't know what you're doing. I've had a couple of friends do that. I won't name any names. 
So if you have a friend or a colleague or someone you know who can do it for you, hands down it's the best thing you can do for lower temperatures as well as higher frequencies and higher FPS when gaming or lower render times when working. Anyway guys, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope this video answered the question whether you need to change your stock thermal paste. And in most cases, the answer is yes, with a large asterisk. Anyway guys, smash that like button if this video helped you. Consider subscribing and dinging that notification bell just down there. You can check out my other content right up here. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.